I sit down every week with my man Kirk from What's New Video Games. And if you want to check out his content and his reviews and guides, the link in description below, you can click on his name. We wanted to talk about, which was just, we're being brave here. There's a lot of hate with Star Wars Outlaws all of a sudden. And uh, it was originally going to be a video just about sort of, does the appearance not look as good as it used to, but it's gotten even worse as pricing and incentive to buy and pre-order has kind of turned into a bit of a mess. So I'm going to end the previous stream. I did talk about Destiny 3. I'm going to end that stream and redirect people over. If you missed my monologue, that's uploaded. Or if you want to see the live discussion, that's available as well. And thanks for being here, Kirk, to discuss this... uh, (laughs) <laughs> this somewhat contentious topic right now. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Like, uh, I can't remember if it was Thursday or Friday, um, or when, whenever this first got announced, and, and I saw the pricing, I was kind of uh, hammering it in chat. Like, I was like, "Hey guys, like, I don't think I don't know if you guys like." It was almost like people didn't notice. It was crazy. Like, I was like, "Hey, like, one thirty is the highest ever for like not a." collector's edition because we've seen collector's editions into the, like 150 and whatever they come with a statue and all that stuff but like as far as like a an ultimate edition type you're gonna get all the you're gonna get the season pass and all the content that's gonna come to the game mm-hmm. but it's just digital or whatever like that used to be a hundred dollars very recently like probably only two years ago was that a hundred dollars so this definitely represents uh, a little bit of a hike and so it's interesting to kind of see that evolve into sort of consuming the, the whole of like discussion over the weekend and everything uh so it's just been even kind of interesting to like see uh see the natural forces at work as far as people realizing that uh you know big companies trying to rip people off type of deal but uh yeah uh take us into it like there's yeah. a lot there's a lot of things going on there's a lot of things at play here not just the pricing aspect yeah, I, I I actually want to save pricing because that's I that, that there's been more discoveries about that. Even this just this morning, you came to me in a DM and you're like, uh, "Look at what they're doing with this." I was like, "Are you stinking kidding me?" And Dave Dave pointed that out in the chat in your previous stream as well, stream as well as did some others. So yeah, yeah, it's it's like it's unraveling in before us, you know, like it's like this ongoing thing where people are sort of realizing in real time, and I think it just goes to show that like the gaming community like consciousness is kind of numbed to this a little bit like these type of practices because they're becoming so commonplace if you just if you look at just five years ago people would have been up in arms about this sort of thing but slowly but surely they're conditioning us lono they're getting us used to this type of malarkey Mm -hmm. um but it's good to see that people are still kind of the, the alarm bells are going off and people are realizing like oh this does represent like something new yeah. Maybe I should push back against that. And like I as long as people are respectful and you know aren't DMing anybody and saying hurt you know hateful things or anything, like I think discourse about this sort of thing and saying, hey, I don't like this is like totally appropriate. So I, I like seeing that. I like seeing people not just accepting of like, hey, we might get we might be getting ripped off here. Well, I want to talk about the appearance of the game first, which I know this is gonna get us into a territory that I, everybody's sort of exhausted with talking about if a character is attractive enough, like I don't, we're, well, I don't we're, think we're, I don't think we're going to cover that. Right. Like we're looking th- at it from, from the pure standpoint of like, so I'll just, t- I'll just tell you what I think is like, the, let me, the let me facial... frame it. Let me frame it. You, you just okay. completely shot that in the foot. I wanted to frame it before you say anything. <laughs> You're so anxious. Well, Try to save you. I'm trying to save you from the attractiveness thing. But you, if you, you don't if you have to go save there. Me. You don't have to save. If you want to go there. I talked about Stellar Blade, okay, and I used the word pervy. I'll be okay, bud. I'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Let me frame it up here. I believe in you, buddy. Let me frame it up. So I have a freeze frame on the screen right now. I'm going to unfreeze it just a second. Let people get a nice look. There it is again. Okay. This is the first trailer. Okay. This debuted 10 months ago. I argued it stole the show at Summer Game Fest. It has 18,000 likes and 3,000 likes. That's on the PlayStation channel. If I switch over to the different version that Ubisoft uploaded, 4 million views, 116,000 likes, only 17,000 dislikes. Okay. Now... In this shot, she looks great. She looks like the concept art. She looks like the promotional art, okay? And we've all seen the latest trailer where she looks like a puppet from Team America, whatever that movie was where they were all puppets, okay? (laughs) 
It's bad. It's real bad. And I think people are misfiring. I think they're completely misfiring. They're like, they made her ugly. And we're getting right back down into the trenches of like, they're filling our games with uggos. And I'm like, no. I think they did something engine level that made her every all of her features are very sharp and like jagged it and and she's not the only one i got screenshots of the other characters where they don't look good here her features are softer her skin is softer like she just looks better now again i don't think she needs to look like the model that's another big debate of like oh they don't look exactly like the model she's a she's a a scoundrel she's a smuggler right she's maybe had her nose broken a couple times she's not gonna look like a runway model okay But I do think people are completely misfiring in their diagnosis on the appearance. So talk a little bit about that. Like, in her hair and everything just looks better here. The movement, all of it. What do you think happened, trailer one to now? Like, what what do they do? Oh, those those very good framing, Lona. I I apologize for downing you. Um, (laughs) I, you know, um, this isn't really something new with ubisoft you know pe- people have people have uh, come at me in the chat you know with the whole skull and bones thing and everything for being a ubisoft shield and i sort of sort of own that i was like you know i i really do like ubisoft um i've liked ubisoft for a long time i'm happy to be in in the ubisoft creator program but that doesn't mean that you know i'm gonna be completely uh blinders on or, or not talk about the negative stuff when when it happens and i just didn't happen to think the skull and bones was was particularly negative personally but when it comes to stuff like this like ubisoft has unfortunately a track record of you know they, they know how to make their games look good when they show them off especially when they show them off in the first place but there's a long-standing history of that we can look at uh watchdogs most famously we can look at um the division you know the 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 heralded uh well-known trailer now where he, where he shuts the car door as he's passing by which was like not in the actual game um assassin's creed unity is another one ghost recon wildlands is another one like all these games showed particularly better um than you know the the, the final release of of all of them and to that end, like, not all of them were egregious. I would say that the Watchdog one is, which is why that one sticks in everybody's memory. Uh, the Division one was, like, not great. I mean, it they made it look really, really good, and the game ended up looking semi-good. I mean, it's good, but it didn't look like that. And we're kind of seeing that here with this sort of carryover from, like, one trailer to the other. And, and also, interestingly, the, the trailer that we got most recently last week... It doesn't really show any actual gameplay, right? So, it's it begs the question, like how, you know, cur- uh, curtailed and and curated was the initial, you know, ten to fifteen minute snippet that we got? You know, did they really try? <laughs> did they pick that bar that she rolls up to at around? Uh, if you want to, if you want to pull it up, around four minutes and fifteen seconds into that gameplay trailer. You know, she's she's running, she's on the speeder bike, she's running mm-hmm. from the Empire because she mm-hmm. wouldn't pay the bribe, and she rolls up to this outpost, you know, bar looking place, and the lighting inside is just immaculate. Like it, the well, lens you, flares you, are going off. Did you and, hear my commentary on why it looks like that? Yeah, because they're doing it. Um, you can go and reinforce that, so I don't paraphrase you poorly. But it, basically, they're they're doing it in the way that uh, uh, movies were shot at that time, or the lighting was at that time. They're trying to emulate movie movie camera lenses from the 70s and 80s, yeah. and that's why I said the same thing. That cantina shot, whenever the the, okay. the droid turns around, it's it's like that Star Wars. It looks great, and I yeah. just want to point out a couple more things here in the comparison. Okay, her hair is all broken apart. I'm going to use my mouse here. Her hair is all broken apart in the new trailer. It's like trailer. the anti-aliasing is bad or something. And, and and then, I don't know why, they gave her a butt chin. She doesn't have a butt chin in the original, or it's barely noticeable. It's like the lighting is so extreme, it's like it makes her look weird. Like it you doesn't... think it's extreme? I was almost going to say it looks like they, they took out like focused lighting. So like in... in in the cantina it almost looks like it's like ray tracing or it's very um intentional light placement where it's like cutting across the camera in a certain way 
and hitting Indy, that's the the droid character, and her in a mm-hmm. in a in a particularly curated type fashion. Like it's coming across her face in the exact way that like the devs would want it to to showcase these characters to the world for the first time. And then with the new trailer, it just kind of looks like the lighting is like, oh, whatever. There's like a sun type oriented lamp thing in the top right, and everything's kind of just covered in light, and it's not like really doing any particular favors for the assets. Like, I thought it was very bland. I thought it was very uh, unintentional, I guess, in terms of the lighting. Like, it just seemed like it was all kind of coated in a, in a sort of, like, yellowish kind of bland light. Whereas the right. the first trailer kind of encapsulated that, that cool blue kind of dark with some, like, red tones that you think of, like, with Star Wars, especially, like, with... Um, the 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 newer trilogy and not the newest trilogy but the prequel trilogy and like revenge of the sith and like the obi-wan show like the obi-wan show got that really well like kind of like cd type of uh outer rim like empire controlled planets or whatever where everything's kind of dark and drab and there's like these cool blues and purples and and navies and stuff and i feel like they got that down with the first trailer and then i or the gameplay segment and i don't see it at all Everything's just kind of like orange and yellow light to me. Well, I've also got another trailer. freeze frame. I have another freeze frame up of the of the one character she meets. And even I think he he looks he looks awkward as well like his hair doesn't seem like it's on his head properly like it's just funky. He's got like a, he does have a wispy hair. Good. Yeah, he doesn't look good. He looks very much like a puppet as well. It's I I think they ran into something with the engine with the characters in the animation like even his mouth animation is not that great now i don't know why they suddenly decided to give her a butt chin that's the, that is one <laughs> weird chin, uh, change i'm like i don't have a problem with butt chins right but why would you make that change of all changes that you you change her from having more See, that's so- the thing, even, even that even that guy looks kind of I just, I don't think the hair looks that good. I think the lighting in the skin is a little bland. There's another character I thought the same thing. Like, there's a shot of her later, the bounty hunter, where her hair texture just doesn't look right. It looks a little bit better here in this shot. But even there, if you look at her face, like the lighting and her skin texture, it's all been, it doesn't look as good as the first trailer. All the characters in my mind don't look as good. Yeah, and I, and I that's what I was going to say is like did they really change it or did they just make everything look a lot better for that one segment for them to premiere the the game. And I think it's that. I think it's the latter is like they turned everything up to 11 and they put her in the most fantastic lighting possible and they chose a gameplay segment that was primarily indoors with really good lighting where she's like uh it's like in that shipyard or whatever where she hops on the the garbage or whatever and like gets moved over and stuff like like everything is very very scripted and like that's how they do their gameplay trailers like they've done it since e3 since whenever ago like they they pick a particular segment that's dialed in and they make the game look really really good and everybody gets really excited for it and we've seen that time and time again whereas you know with the with the faces and the facial animations and the the new stuff it honestly, rem- what I was going to say when I was <laughs> derailing your intro is uh, it reminds me a lot of Mass Effect Andromeda. Like when everybody freaked out about the faces looking weird in that. Like it just something's like the Uncanny Valley are like off about pretty much all of them. Like it doesn't have anything to do with her or like her attractiveness or like her eyes don't look like they're right. Like it doesn't like she's like looking in the right place. And all this stuff was like not a problem in that first gameplay segment that they showed like even like her sitting in the chair and and talking to the guy or whatever it's like it's like she's cross-eyed or something like i don't understand like why she looks like that um well they animate her in this scene and she's like try she's like trying to plead her case with this guy and i kind of freeze framed it a couple of times there just to showcase i'm gonna i'm gonna loop it back so people can see this when she like raises her eyebrows like her her face changes Looks like long. three times in this scene i'm gonna try and get the first like look at her right there she's like angry and she has the weird puppet teeth thing going on and then she looks like that and then she looks like that and now she looks like that she like her eye shape is different she looks younger like her face doesn't look consistent even in this one sequence. Like if you She's watch it, if you watch it really, really closely, it's like her face changes 
not from just the facial expression. It looks like a different woman's face throughout it. I think this is an engine level problem. Sure. And 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 most if yeah, most I would say Ubisoft games excluding like the new Avatar one and maybe Far Cry it just in general as a franchise. I mean, 6 is a good example, but like the division and the crew motor fest and uh the ghost recon games like their character models are not up to snuff like they're not looking great compared to the rest of games out there um and so like i'm guessing that this is just kind of carry over from that i mean i don't know how long this game's been in development but i mean they're certainly not using anything as far as like new tech here that's like groundbreaking i don't think um, and this has been like a consistent Ubisoft problem. Like I don't, I don't know of a game where Ubisoft has had really great character models. I mean, it's just kind of a thing where their characters, the way they move, is very stilted. Their faces look kind of wonky. The lip syncing isn't always amazing. And so, you know, that's just kind of something that you get with a Ubisoft game. But when it's like the crew, and really only all, all you have to put up with is like some girl like doing an intro telling you like. Here on the island, we do blah, 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 blah. And you're like, whatever, skip, 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 skip. Like, you don't care. But if we're going to be on board with, like, this smuggler character that we're supposed to get invested in for hours upon hours of gameplay, you know, that could, in theory, present an issue. Um, I'm not sure. I also think they struggle with hair. Like, the other characters, yeah. they all have short hair. And the one guy, when his hair was kind of hanging down his face, like, it didn't look particularly good, like... I think again and again that's just inconsistent like here her 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 skin looks better it looks softer in tone like the lighting looks a little bit better I do I think there's something going on with the lighting as well like she actually looks a little bit more feminine in this shot almost like you know they've her skin tone and her skin texture has been softened up again and the butt chin is not there or barely oh. noticeable and again it's yeah. the lighting it's like this is the same trailer that everyone's angry about and as she turns her head I, I don't see this big divot in her chin anymore I think it's a lighting issue and that's why I don't buy into because th th that they have quote unquote uglified her I, I got do not kind of dead eyes too like mm -hmm. the emotive the emotiveness that her eyes is like able to communicate it's it doesn't she's got like kind of these dead um just black looking eyes that don't really you know you can't really see them you know shift from left to right or anything like it's there's not any emotion coming out of them and like i think that's pretty key like if you look at something like the last of us or like god of war like obviously ubisoft is just not going to be on that level but i mean this is a this is in large part like a, a narrative story-based game even though it's going to be in uh also very much about exploration and such with it being star wars so like you're supposed to get invested in this character and like what's going on with them and yeah by comparison like you've got like kratos like he's able to communicate so much by just sort of looking off into the distance or, or into the camera you know making very very few uh noises or anything like just shrugging his shoulders or something like through his face through his body language he's able to communicate so much and i just don't know that uh, you know, maybe that's why some of the dialogue that what, like you were commenting on in the reveal stream is kind of weird is because they're trying to get her to emote, you know, they're trying to get her to be like, I'm excited about this or I'm not excited about this or whatever, because like her, her animations are like not accomplishing that. So they're like overdoing it with the dialogue, maybe. I don't know. Well, and again, uh, she doesn't look consistent. I have her in an action <laughs> sequence here and now she looks she looks younger uh you know the, her skin tone looks completely different like it's uh, there's not consistency within this trailer so i think people are kind of jumping the gun they took one bad screenshot and they're like yep here we go again they've now made a character ugly and it's like okay first and foremost she was never cast as this super hot character yeah. 10 months ago she looked a little bit like 80s Joan Jett vibes right she's got like the hair and the jacket but they, she didn't come across in the trailer at all as like she's going to turn heads in the cantina that's not the purpose of the character I never had any issue with yeah with her not being overtly beautiful or having sex appeal or anything I mean like it, I just thought like oh this is female Han Solo like that's that's who this is supposed to be. Yeah, she's just she's uh, a smuggler. She's a yeah. you know she's a she's a gun runner. She you know like I said she's probably had her nose broken a couple times and, and been shot at right. And so my thought is 
the, the, the criticism stacking up. And I think the valid criticism is not that, oh, she doesn't look pretty anymore. I think we're seeing inconsistency at an engine level and at a lighting level, and I think people are just going to have to get over that. There there were times in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor, especially the newest one, where I thought Cal looked kind of funny and his hair looked kind of funny. It was just... It, Cal you does know, look funny. Cal but but he, but he funny. looks like Cameron Monaghan, but there were times yeah. where he did look a little wonky, and I think that's just... An, especially hair. I think hair is one of the yeah. hardest things to get right in the game, and I always had him with the longer hair or like a ponytail because I thought that made him look more like a Jedi. And in this game, the criticism started diverting from she's ugly to this is... Uh, an absolute egregious form of pricing so the first thing i was ready to do i was ready to say 40 dollars for a season pass is normal right we're going to get two pieces of content that makes them 20 bucks a pop they're not the first company to do this like that doesn't bother me if you don't want to pay ahead of time for the dlc then don't but i watched a good video today where the guy from uh, Darth Microtransactions. He's got the long hair. He's covering Diablo. Everybody loves him, you know, because he just seems like he's always just being genuine and just giving you what he thinks. So I was like, let me see what he has to say because I like him. And he basically said his issue with it was that they put early access at the higher level. A lot of games now will give you early access just for pre-ordering. He's like, but they put the early access at the higher level and then you're basically automatically then paying for the dlc and i was like okay i actually kind of agree with him on that criticism if you're going to add early access as a perk you know let everybody get it if they pre-order i think that that's fair if you want to pay ahead of time that's a nice perk you're paying ahead of time so you get to play ahead of time i think that that's logical but it got worse it got worse because we suddenly find out today that they're also putting a a mission behind the more expensive version because I didn't agree with Asmongold's take where he's like there shouldn't be day one DLC what we know about development and development cycles I've never agreed with the idea that a, a game a company can't have planned DLC I think that that's I think it's stupid and ignorant. Well, planned day one are not the same thing, Lono. Planned DLC so, means that they're planning on releasing it and they could announce it day one or tell you it's coming. I don't have a problem with that. Okay, what, I, th- I thought what Asmund was saying was not okay is if, you, if there is an upcharge for DLC that you get on day one. Like, he, when, the, when you boot up the game, you have to pay 10, 15, whatever it is, dollars extra to get the DLC that they already have ready. I felt like he was saying that that if it's ready to go, it should have been a part of your initial purchase. I agree with that, but at the time he was making it, he was just reacting to season the season pass, like the fact that there's DLC okay. coming. There are people that completely disagree with that. They think if you have DLC day one that you're you're basically selling and it's not in the game we're owed that and i'm like but it's not ready now i agree if what asmund gold meant was if i misunderstood him and what he meant was if he was referring to the job of the hut mission which he never mentioned that we learned about that over the weekend he was just talking about the season pass if he was talking about job of the hut if he was talking about the job of the hut mission i 100 agree with him i think that that's absolutely stupid to take a mission or a quest that's ready to day one and to not put it in the, in the in the standard release of the game i agree with him if that's what he meant to be fair i think we found out about that late i think people might have known about that since l- late last week well i just uh, i watched his whole video and he never made mention of it he zeroed in yeah. on the season pass and kept saying day one dlc and i know people got angry when spider-man did that spider-man yeah. was like oh yeah we've got dlc that we know we're going to ship you can buy it now and people were furious i'm like what i don't understand what the big deal is when are they supposed to start working on dlc if they start working on it the day after the game ships you're not going to get your DLC for, you know, two years or more. They, 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 they do parallel development. They have teams assigned to additive content that's not ready day one. So I, that, I think, is I'm in agreement with. I was ready to yeah. defend the season pass. Well, I'm not defending it now because you have a mission <laughs> that's ready. Why is it not yeah. in the base game? That's ridiculous. Well, they're separate, right? And And, and this is something that... A, Ubisoft has been doing for a while, and B, everybody's been doing for a while in the form of pre-orders. Like, you see these, like, uh, exclusive pre-order missions all the time. Sometimes you can't even get them. Like, sometimes, but usually it's, like, not that fleshed out. 
And I'd imagine that this Jabba the Hutt content is not going to be incredible. You might get a cutscene with him for like two minutes and you never see him again until you do this quest or whatever. Um, but I remember there was a, there was a paid mission or paid mission chain in Assassin's Creed Unity. And that game came out, what, like 2014, 2015? And that, that's a Ubisoft game. And you see games do it a lot with pre-order uh, bonuses where they're like, pre-order now and get the blah, 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 you know, Secret of the Lost Tunnel mission or whatever for Tomb Raider or whatever it is. I, I don't know. I'm not trying to say that Tomb Raider did that. I have no idea. I'm just coming up with an example. Um, but that is a thing that exists. And, and, and if I took the time, I could go find examples of it. So, like, I wonder if it's just... If I think what we're seeing here, I guess this is what I'm trying to posit, Lono. We're seeing things that ha we've been conditioned to little by little over time because it's not a drastic shift. You know, it's like things slowly being layered on top of one another of, oh, well, now certain things are going to be locked behind pre-order. Now certain things are going to be put in a season pass, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we've slowly gotten more used to those things over time over the last like five or so years. And then the price jumps up. Mm -hmm. Now that the price jumps up, we start looking into it. We're like, okay, what's all this here? And it's like, a lot of this stuff is stuff that we've been silently acquiescing to for a long time. All y'all that, you know, go out and pre-order games. All y'all that buy these season passes uh, day one when you don't even know what the content is going to be yet. Um, I, You know, I, I'm not trying to say it's, you know, I've never done that before. I totally have done it before. I don't think it's smart or prudent to do it, but I've done it before. Um, and so it's like, I think this is stuff that it's, it's good that this is happening and that everybody is sort of reflecting on this, not only in terms of like what, what these companies are doing and how they're pricing and how they're locking content behind certain paywalls. But I think it's also good for us as a community to sort of self-assess and say, okay, but yeah, we've also been feeding into this model for like the longest time. And now they're just trying to milk more money out of us. So you know, if if what's happened here is they've just they've gotten too greedy and they tried to get ten dollars extra for things that we probably shouldn't even necessarily be paying as much as we were paying them for the last several years anyway, and now we're gonna say, oh wait, you went too far. Great, because I think a lot of these practices, I think a lot of the practices of, we'll go ahead and just give us more than a hundred dollars for content you don't even know what it is yet, you don't have a way of getting the content unless you give us the extra money, and it's stuff that you know arguably may or may not should be in the in the actual game when we launch it you know it's cut content that we withheld um and then if you don't pre-order you don't get this outfit you don't get whatever you know these are commonplace things that we've seen and I i'm really glad that now as a result of like corporate greed and ubisoft probably charging a little bit more than they should have for this i mean uh, we talked about this privately but you know they they'd long done the 100 dollars 120 dollars kind of split of the like deluxe upgrade and the ultimate upgrade and that's something that the industry has kind of followed and i think people were like reluctantly comfortable with that you know it was kind of like an understood agreement of like okay you guys can do this sometimes maybe people will get the the more expensive editions this is about where we're like okay with it with the 70 dollar increase from 60 this is where we're able to live like you guys can do this if you want to make extra money that's fine and it's like this is the first time now and literally the first that i know of where they've tried to make more than that they've, they've gone above that 100 gone above that 120 and people don't like it and i think it's for good reason and so it's like it's causing people like you and me who do coverage to be like skeptical it's like hey you want to charge me 130 dollars for this and her face looks all busted up and the the animations are wonky and the lighting's wonky you know it's like i, I mean I, there's been a wave of of more criticism in games and people you know hating on games more but also they're having to pay more so maybe maybe it's merited in that regard yeah i think originally like i said i was prepared to say mm, if games are 70 bucks then there's no misstep here, right? They're charging 40 for a season pass, and that's pretty normal, right? That I didn't have an issue with that. I was like, oh, yeah. game 70, buy the game at 70, and wait to get the season pass till later if you want to. And I think that's a completely fair offer in the market, is you can buy the game for 70, or you can buy it for 110 and it comes with this season pass or you can wait because if the game is bad or you don't like it or you think that the additive content looks stupid then save your money but the problem here is is that they're taking two things 
I don't really have an uh, uh, I don't really have a significant issue with the early access as a as a pre order bonus. That's never bothered me. Putting early access at the 110, and also then putting a job of the hut mission, a nostalgic mission behind that. Oh, that's what I'm like. Tough. Nope. There's no defense of this. There's no. Yeah. There's no way to look at this and say that that it's legitimate or allowed. We should all look at this and say no. Just like when they did something with Star Wars. What was it? Battlefront, the second one, when they were doing something and everybody got really angry and they got them to not do it. Well, they ended up doing it later. Well, the, the, yeah, the whole. Um the whole game was built around pay to win loot box mechanics, like the whole progression system. And they ended up pulling it. They gutted it entirely and changed it. But yeah, the whole game was built around basically opening a crate and then you get boom, 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 like six things. And like, that was the whole progression. Like that's how you leveled up your character is getting these cards that you would then like equip on your character and they would like uh, flesh out their abilities and stuff. And they got to their credit because of the bad class, they gutted that entire system. And, uh, for a while, I, thought, I thought they ended up putting it back in. I thought they ended up circling back and putting it in the game. They may have the crates, but I think they're cosmetic only. Or uh, they, they did a major overhaul, which is why that game sort of saw a resurgence. There is a, a, a faithful community to that game now. There, there's nothing problematic about it, I will say. Um, okay, okay. The, yeah, there's nothing problematic about the game now. But would they have done that if, if people had bought in and hadn't pushed back and they'd made a ton of money? Absolutely not. They would have made I, hand over fist, you know? I just like being able to tell the consumer, just buy the standard version and wait. And I think that's yeah. a fair response when people get angry about, well, I want to play early. You don't need to play early. Well, I I don't know if I want the DLC yet or not. Great. Great. Don't don't buy it then. Just buy the base game. I can't say that this time because it's like you're not buying the base game. You're buying Very the true. base game minus a mission. And that's where you're going to give an inch and they're going to walk all over us because somebody brought up Hogwarts. Hogwarts had the exclusive mission to PlayStation for like a year or whatever. I criticized it at the time. I was like, I hate this. It's such a bygone era. It's so not necessary. If you buy Hogwarts and I buy Hogwarts, we should get the same dadgum game. I don't care if you're playing on Xbox or PlayStation. And in this case, if you buy Star Wars Outlaws and I buy Star Wars Outlaws, I get an extra mission because I spent more money than you, and that's exactly what people have been fearful about with respect to microtransactions and the over-monetization of games. I don't mind additive content. I don't mind season passes. I don't mind extra content beyond the base story. That's I'm fine with that. There, there are people that hate that. They think that planned DLC is horrible and that they shouldn't do it. I'm like, no. What we understand about parallel development, planned DLC is completely fine. If you're wanting to get more money out of a project, then that's a great way to do it. And then the consumer can, if they want, buy more content and buy more experiences. But this slicing up a game at launch and having different versions, I I honestly think it'll end up backfiring if it gets more attention drawn to it because it confuses the consumer. It's like, well, wait, what yeah. am I supposed to buy here? Well, and, and you know, you're saying, oh, well... I, uh, I get a mission if I spend more money. I mean, again, I think that's something that we've seen before. Um, but like for ten dollars, which was scummy then. But this is this is literally forty dollars, right? Like this is forty dollars extra. Or 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 in theory, you might not be able to get that mission. Like maybe they'll come out with a way for you to buy that mission for five or ten bucks a la carte or something. But we don't know that. So this is literally from seventy. Again, they hiked it up by ten dollars. So it's not 70 to 100, it's 70 to $110 to get this mission that in theory should be a part of that baseline, you know, entry level purchase. And so like, that's, that's kind of crazy. Um, you know, and I bet the mission is not anything anyway. I bet it's pure marketing. And again, cause she's interacting with Jabba in the trailer, right? So there's no way that's just in the mission right like they wouldn't put that <laughs> in the trailer if that's just in the exclusive mission like surely she's interacting with Jabba normally uh through the course of the game at least at some point you- you'd like to think anyway but yeah th- I mean that that price hike for you know unknown unknown benefit or like unknown that that's the crazy part is that they're asking people to pay $40 extra for completely undefined content. Like, we don't know what this Jabba the Hutt mission is. We don't know if you don't have access to missions from Jabba the Hutt 
on Tatooine. Otherwise, we don't know what the season pass is going to entail. We don't know if that's... Let me you know, read the description. I can read the okay. description of it here. Yeah, go for it. Justice K is putting together a crew for the Canto Bite heist. She receives a job from Jabba the Hutt himself. Turns out that ND5 owes Jabba a debt from years ago, and he has come to collect. So... This includes both K and ND5, the droid that you're with. So, again, this is probably the scene that we see in the trailer when she's like, I've got the place surrounded, and she's like, oh, I guess we're just going to skip that part. So getting to go to Jabba's palace, getting to interact with him, stand in front of him, that is iconic. That's, that's, That's right out of... The movies, some of the best yeah. scenes in the movies, right, is 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 in Jedi when we're not sure what's going to happen with Jabba. So, the fact that the fact that they did that and and think that that's okay, I I don't I don't think it's going to affect the commercial success of this game at all. By the way, it's Star Wars, right? Jedi Survivor launched in an abysmal state, had a terrible score on Steam, and it was the ninth most sold game last year in America, right? A top ten. Yeah, but game. that's not good. In like, a year where not good. in a year where Hogwarts and Zelda and Spider Man and Madden and Call of Duty all came out, that's and you're in the top ten with those boys. That's good. Yeah, but Hogwarts shouldn't be beating you that bad if you're oh. Star Wars. Are you kidding me? If you're Star Wars, Hogwarts and Star Wars aren't in the same universe anymore. Of popularity, brother. No way. Hogwarts blew the Seriously? doors off the year commercial. Yes. Oh yes. Hogwarts has the advantage of spanning generations. It spans gender trends, right? Because men are more into Star Wars. And, you know, my wife played Hogwarts. Like, I think Hogwarts was absolutely untouchable by even Star Wars itself. It's also a uh, a genre of game that hasn't really... Like, we got the movie tie-ins, but we, we, we haven't really ever had sort of bespoke um you know from the made from the ground up video games just in that universe whereas star wars you know has had that since the playstation one era so there was definitely like a hunger for that sort of thing like a just let me be a student and like make my own story type of thing um but yeah i wouldn't really think of i mean especially with disney doing the new trilogy i know they weren't good but people went and saw them they made tons of money um, I wouldn't really think that Hogwarts, which hasn't really had anything other than the Fantastic Beast movies recently, would would outperform by that much. I mean, I think that just speaks to it the quality Zelda. of that game versus <laughs> Survive. Oh well, the game was amazing. It I mean, just, that that game. I yeah. was gonna say that. I mean, we can we can segue here, maybe if you'd like to. Um, I think I think that's the benchmark for this game. Like if you it, like if Ubisoft wants this game to be successful, it just needs to be as good as Hogwarts Legacy. Like that's all it needs to offer is I want to go experience and live in this world and it feel real and I am a smuggler and I am, you know, in the outer rim on Tatooine and, and engaging with bounty hunters and doing, you know, getting up to all sorts of hijinks and getting into, you know, whether I'm getting into space battles or I'm getting into battles on the ground or whatever, but it needs to feel like it's that kind of Star Wars, like anything can happen, you can get into trouble, or a situation can go bad on a dime and have these iconic type of characters that you're interacting with. If they can capture that feel, it doesn't even have to necessarily include like a Jabba or Han or any characters that we know and love. Like it can be like Hogwarts was, where it, all the professors are totally new, all of the characters are totally new because it's supposed to be in an era in the past before Harry was even alive, you know, if they can capture that Star Wars feel and make you feel like you are like actually there living in that world, I don't think, I don't think it matters if the character models look terrible. I mean, uh, if, if you feel like you're there and like you're, you're getting to experience Star Wars, almost like it's a theme park or something like Hogwarts legacy is like that. Red dead redemption two is like that. Like there's a reason that everybody compared Westworld to Red Dead Redemption 2 when that show came out is because that's what Red Dead Redemption 2 felt like. It mm-hmm. felt like you were actually there existing in that world. Like it was almost like some type of theme park or something that felt real. And so like that's all they got to do with this, right? Is they just got to make you feel like you are you are living in Star Wars because we'd never had that. We'd never had a Star Wars game where you could just get on a ship and go to another planet and then run around that planet and do stuff and 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 live in that world and and do bounties and stuff like that 
it, they've always been sort of linear type experiences, I think. And well, so, like, that's all they got to nail, right? Well, yeah, I was going to bring that up, too, that people are basically like, what's the point in playing a Star... This is something that Asmongold really got on. He was like, what's the point in playing a Star Wars game if there's no lightsabers and there's no Force? And I'm like, you're kidding a yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're kidding yourself if you think, like, a Mandalorian game wouldn't have absolutely crushed if it came out and it was high-quality third person and you're jetpacking around and you're doing bounties. And, like, being in the world of Star Wars, there is so much more that you can do in a video game setting that doesn't require this, like, you have to have a, a lightsaber and you have to be Jedi. I think that there is room for that, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Because of I, Jedi Survivor and Fallen Order. But I don't want a bunch of those games to come out. I would love a Mandalorian game. I like the concept of, of Star Wars Outlaws. I like the concept of, you know, you could play a game purely as, I don't know, imagine a Stormtroopers game that's like silly and throwaway and goofy like Helldivers 2. Like, there's so, so great. There's so much oh you can do God. with the universe and the people and the characters. Like, I, I think people are, I get it. If you're not interested in a Star Wars game because it doesn't have lightsabers, I get it. But there's a lot of us that like Star Wars enough that I would, I'm totally, this is my, this was my most anticipated game behind Hellblade 2 this year because I just, I like being in the world of Star Wars. What, what, I would say it, is my most anticipated game no no no. um like a dragon would be first but behind like a dragon yeah um i mean i mean how how can it not be like i it's just just something so raw and uh, i don't want to put those two words together (laughs) i was gonna say enjoyable but there's something so um there's like a wonder to this space and to the part of star wars that is kind of untapped that like the old like we we played we both played dark forces earlier this year you know the the second game in that franchise sort of gets into like what what's that like being Kyle Katarn and being a scoundrel and uh you know to Asmund's cre- uh point uh he he acts Kyle Katarn becomes a Jedi so maybe that I, I think that would be like a good avenue for for Ubisoft to go like DLC wise like I think that'd be great like why not just give us like if if K meets the Jedi character you know, that's hiding or something like that, you know, we could play as them for some DLC or something like that. That would be a great opportunity for them to give some Jedi gameplay. Although I don't know that Ubisoft can necessarily nail that in the way that like Respawn has. But I think there's something so awesome about exploring like this seedy kind of underbelly of the Star Wars universe. I mean, that's why Solo, a Star Wars story, that movie exists, whether you like it or not. Like there is stuff about that, that space of the galaxy and just sort of the 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 outlaws and the vigilantes and the bounty hunters and the smugglers like that's that's sort of in large part like what made star wars iconic other than the jedi thing like the jedi thing is obviously the main focal point of star wars the whole thing about him you know training to become a jedi how cool it is to be a jedi how cool it is to have a lightsaber and him going up against darth vader who's like this iconic villain who who is who also was once a jedi who's turned evil but like the other part about star wars that's so endearing and captivating is like when they are on tatooine and they are in the cantina and the whole beginning you know the end of uh, uh the empire strikes back and the beginning of return of the jedi and like sort of existing in those spaces in this world and like George Lucas's creativity, in far as as far as fleshing all that out, like the the prospect of spending a whole game just interacting with and engaging in that, like that's so freaking cool. Like I hope they nail this. I hope we're like we're just talking out of our butts, and we're just we're we're scared because we have reason to be because it's Ubisoft and they you know lied to us before as far as like the marketing. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I can get over us if 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 she looks a little funky and the lighting's not quite as good as we thought. I think I can get yeah. over that if the gameplay oh, yeah. is phenomenal because the idea of like these huge open planets and there's actually going out into outer space, like the people that are like, oh, if there's no you know there's no lightsabers or no Jedi, I'm not interested. Like X Wing versus Tie Fighter is like an iconic and historic game, so like we're gonna oh, yeah. have elements of space battles in this like that. If you watch the original Star Wars movies, there is so much more going on. You know, they're the, the getting in space fight 
fights and X-Wings versus TIE Fighters and the Millennium Falcon and then, the, you know, g- getting into shootouts and going into, like, a bar and not sure if you're going to get killed or not. I mean, yeah. it was more of a Western than it was some, like, fa- you know, science fiction fantasy land where these mythical Jedi were doing stuff. Like, it was mysterious. Well, it was both. It was and both. There, right. And it was mis- there was a mystique about it, which is what made it so cool. And yeah. I don't necessarily need another game where I'm a Jedi and I have the Force and I have a lightsaber. It's like, okay, Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor did a great job with that. I don't need another game like that. I, I would love a fresh take. I, I want a game where I'm a bounty hunter. I think that would be a fresh take. Some of the best Star Wars games historically, like Shadows of the Empire on the Nintendo 64, yeah. like... Come yeah. on, that was a great Star Wars game, bro. Yeah, and we've been denied a game like this for so long, right? I mean, there's literally footage of that 1313 or whatever that game's called, where it looks like a like a Gears of War Uncharted type cover based thing, and then that th- we got word that the Mandalorian game was canceled recently. So it's like we really haven't had a game like this since Shadow of the Empire, and. You know, I love Shadow of the Empire. I played it as a kid. Sorry to all my uh, my Shadow of the Empire fans out there. That game does not hold up, like, as far as the controls and, like, trying to play that game now. It's a rough experience. So, like, hell yeah, do I want, like, a new, like, bounty hunter uh, type Star Wars game. I mean, that, that I, I hope they nail this. And, again, I think as long as they do... Because cause, uh, I think... We, I, I'm curious what your opinion is on this, but I feel like, Lona, we look at Hogwarts with rose-tinted glasses because they nailed what they nailed. Like, I don't know that your character in Hogwarts is extremely compelling. They're kind of like a cookie-cutter, like, insert-yourself-here type of deal. Mm-hmm. I don't know that the story in Hogwarts is super compelling. It's it, They're relying on... The goblins are bad, and they're having an uprising, and like they don't have a big bad like Voldemort, like it's this goblin guy. And I'm not gonna spoil any story or anything, but it 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 doesn't feel as compelling as like the story in the books or anything like that. It's just kind of like we need a plot moving thing where your character's gonna get stronger, and they're gonna find out things about the lore, and your character needs to save the day and, you know, make some friends along the way type of deal. And it's more about that. It's more about the friends you make along the way and the places you get to explore and the side stories, like the whole thing with the, 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 the Slytherin bros and, you know, the, the intrigue there and, and, and loss and you know people figuring out like, Oh, am I going to use my power for good or for evil? That sort of thing is like, what's compelling about that game and like going to class and exploring the castle, exploring the Highlands surrounding uh, learning to, to fly, you know, with your broom and things like that. It's all about interacting with the world. It's not necessarily about the characters and the story. And so, like, if they can nail that with this game, I don't know that, that the characters in the story even have to be... I mean, they just have to be average. Like, as long as they can nail the feeling of, I am in Star Wars land. I am in, you know, I am in wherever this takes place, the Outer Rim, or I am you know, on Tatooine or I am wherever and like I'm doing a bounty hunt or I'm smuggling or I'm, you know, I'm doing a mission for Jabba because I paid the extra $40 <laughs> or whatever, you know, like if they nail that, I feel like this conversation goes away. But I feel like this conversation is happening because there's a lack of confidence in Ubisoft. You know, like if, if uh, I don't know, if a, if a different studio was making this, I'm not sure who who the right example is. But there might be less conversation about this. There's still be conversation about the pricing, but I think it, it all it all kind of goes into one thing of like the pricing is high and it's Ubisoft and Ubisoft is kind of like they had a period where they like weren't really putting bangers out and like they were kind of struggling. I mean, Ghost Recon Breakpoint and Watch Dogs Legion and Riders Republic and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Extraction. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of duds on that list of the last, like, three years for Ubisoft. Sure, they had some good games like Far Cry 6 and others. Um, you know, even even Sparks of Hope, the Rabbit sequel, the Mario Rabbit sequel, didn't really do that great. So, like, I think people are a little bit concerned with Ubisoft in general, and they're like, oh, God, like, are we really trusting this very, very, like, beloved and, like, heralded IP to them? And, like, are they really going to nail it? You know, I mean, and it's like, even if they do, how are people going to receive it? Because uh, you've been on this platform, like, championing the 
the Avatar game, like you basically said, like there's nothing wrong with that game. Like it's a good experience. It's beautiful. And I was just you know, going to say, I was just going to segue yeah. to that and say, Go Avatar was beautiful, but the content loop and the gameplay was too familiar and people rejected it. They're like, it's Blue Far Cry. So, okay, Star Wars Outlaws, if graphically it's not as strong as we originally hoped from the initial trailer and it's a bit of a downgrade, I think the gameplay can make up for it, right? Je- Jedi true. Survivor is not a gorgeous game. It's rough around the edges. It had performance issues, but the gameplay loop was great. The story was great. I loved my time with it. It did take them four or five months to actually actually fix performance and it's still in bad shape on PC and I will be angry about that until I am dead but I actually really think that from what I've seen they could nail the content loop my lingering concern would be they just give us another classic open world UB game but it sounds like they were thoughtful about that in an interview they're like no there is no climbing towers to unlock the map like they're it sounds like they're actively trying to avoid some of the things that has made their open world games frustrating in the past so maybe this this game will give me what i want which is a good star wars game even if graphically it's not where we were like hoping it would end up and i i just i want to get away from the the constant focus on is the main character ugly let's all go to google and search for headshots yep. where the lighting and the makeup is perfect and and now she's playing a gun running smuggler who's getting in shootouts and getting punched in the face and she should look like you know the the headshots that we find on google image search like i want to move away from that and be like is the game any good you know yep. like how many Absolutely. photoshopped images have we seen of Aloy? Horizon Forbidden West is a triumph of a game. And all these weird guys that like use their AI programs to make her look like a, a makeup model or a runway model. It's like, good lord. Like it's 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 not even doing it ironically and they just it's embarrassing. It's a weird fixation. It's a very weird fixation. Um I said earlier in the stream that uh she's basically female Han Solo and somebody in chat was like well, are, are you are you kidding me with that? Uh, Han was like a uh, like a dreamy, you know. He was he was eye candy basically, and I was, and, and my response to that is like, yeah, but like that's for women, like you know, like it's not like he was he was masculine, I guess, in terms of quality. Like he's like this gun running, like you know, hotshot guy, and so like that's the thing is like that's the role. So they're putting a woman into that role. Expecting her to somehow be like the word the wording you use a lot on this channel is femme fatale. Expecting her to be some sort of like graceful, sexy femme fatale that's like strutting around in five inch heels or something. Right. Is like ridiculous. Like what are we like what are we taught like you know, that would honestly, be if she was a spy, if she was like a spy, if it was like a spy or like a thriller, it would make sense for her to leverage her attractiveness like a Black yes. Widow character. But yeah. she's she's not. She she's a she's a smuggler. She's probably running guns and drugs for people. Like she's you know, she's gonna be rough around the edges. She's gonna look like she's you know, maybe lived on the streets for a while. She's not she's probably not got a great background as a character. And that's that's another thing too, is like I hate to break it to all you guys that like want Aloy to be in like, you know, five pounds of makeup and um look like she just got off of a Victoria's Secret w- runway or something. But like there's plenty of people out there, male and female, who are really into like, you know, the Ronda Rousey and the you know, the 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 woman female athlete types like that that are you know in good shape and work out and could probably like pin you to the ground if they if they wrestled you or something like more of tomboy types you know like not every woman has to be you know super feminine hyper feminine hyper femme fatale looking to be attractive so like you know k vess is attractive in her own right it's not necessarily like what i'm looking for and also i don't necessarily need to like be enamored and attracted to the sex appeal of every video game character. In fact, that's almost sort of distracting unless you kind of bake it into your game in a clever, fun way, like a Bayonetta or something. Um, what I find interesting, you know, why too, can't though... we just have these characters, you know, that we just play as and we don't have to oogle over for whatever reason? But what I find interesting is, is if you go to any of the promotional material... They they make her pretty. Like I don't I don't understand why. I, that's why I think people are misdiagnosing. I it's, try to I try to save you. <laughs> you step back in it. No, I I, like, I think it's it fine. It doesn't I, matter. And you're like, well, I don't understand because they make her pretty sometimes. In all the promotional materials, they do. Like 
I'm just smacking down the notion that they uh, they, uh, they uglified her. I don't give a frick, dude. I've never cared about what what people think of my opinions. I'm gonna say them. Like, and the butt chin's very subtle, but it's there in this in this promotional. This is the newest poster that they put out. I've got up on the screen here. Um, let me see if I can't get a better crop for you guys. Let me try. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, I'm gonna. Tr- oh, yeah, I can't do it. I'm not sophisticated enough. Um, because I got Kirk on half my monitor and this on the other half. Um, so yeah, I, I again think that I can get over all of that if the engine's not as polished. If we've got some rough edges, as long as I'm getting 60 FPS and the gameplay loop is good, I'm. This is still on the top of my most anticipated game of the year, right up there with Hellblade 2. And even that's going to have issues that I'm sure are going to frustrate me because I gotta play it on PC if I want to get 60 FPS. Um, you know, I th- th- this to me. I think the general public is not tuned into any of this dialogue about confidence in Ubisoft and price. I think they see Star Wars. I think they see droids and blasters and flying, and they're going to be like, give me that and give me the most expensive version. You think? I was going to say they they would just go pick it up for 70 bucks. Do you think think people are going to spend $130? I think there's a subset of the gaming community that always drags the cursor all the way to the right and buys the most expensive version every time. I think there are people that do that. Well, then that's why they do it. Then we then we then we have no right to come on here and 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 complain about it. You know, for thirty minutes, if 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 everybody's going to give them the money, then obviously they would do it if people are going to spend the money. So it's like, why are people doing that? Like, if we don't want them to do that, don't buy it. Like, like if we can perceive that it's greedy and we can perceive that the value doesn't equate to the money that you're having to spend for it, just Mm -hmm. don't don't buy it. Like, I'm on the fence now about this game that I very much think I want to play because of everything that we've discussed here as far as buying it at all like in terms of in the window like this might be this might move to a Black Friday game for me I don't know I don't know if we're going to cover it probably that might change uh, you know the way I'm look at, looking at it or, or whether or not I have the ability to play it but you know because of this whole conversation and the way this is going obviously if they if they grace me with a copy fantastic I'd love to dive into it and, and do some some coverage for them, good or bad. You know, whatever my takes are on it, it's going to be uh, uh, authentic. But uh, I didn't get a code for Avatar because that was a big IP. Um, I did get a code for for Prince of Persia and Skull and Bones, but I think with Avatar and um, and Star Wars, like those are just those are box office, you know. And so I think they're expecting to sell those, and so they don't really need to give, especially smaller creators like me. Uh, a free copy to get that exposure, right? Because like you said, this is going to sell gangbusters. People are going to see the Star Wars name and the title and they're going to go buy it. So that then makes me the average consumer again. Um, And there's enough around this to where I feel uncomfortable. Like there's enough around this to where I wouldn't want to pre-order it and I'm not sure how I feel about spending the $70 up front. It's tempting to, to go with their Ubisoft Plus subscription that 18 bucks or whatever to get in on day one do you think that's what they're trying to do because it looks really compelling it's like oh just grab ub plus that's why i don't want to do it because they're trying to uh they're trying to condition my behavior and they hope you you forget they hope that you sign up for ub plus because if they can get you know a million people to do that out of you know let's say this thing sells in its opening month it sells i don't know three four million copies as a star wars title i don't know what they expect but let's just say it lands in there if half a million people you know snag that ub plus subscription and then you know two hundred and fifty thousand people forget and they let that ride for the year like that's that's always that idea of can we get people in our sub service and then they forget to cancel. Now the people that remember to cancel, they get a steal. They get to play the game for eighteen bucks, you know. And then they yeah. just cancel it. I mean, that's honestly the best strategy for the people that are irritated about pricing. See, for me, it seems like a game that I would want to own. So then it's like now I'm twenty dollars in the bucket of like, you know, it, it, I was I was only fifty away from buying it at launch, and I'm only you know, however much away from buying it at the first sale. So it's like, do I really? Is it really worth it to me to, I mean, as a, as a content creator, maybe, but also the way that I do content, the way that I do reviews, I kind of have to have it in hand in the first place. You know, like I, I, like if, if, if when, if on day one, when people who haven't pre-ordered it are like, huh, should I pick this up? Like, how is it? 
if my video isn't up already for them to Google, then it doesn't matter. So, like, there is that draw of, like, oh, well, if I do want to cover it at all, I might want to get it, you know, with the three days early access and whatever. Which that's something we haven't talked about also is, like, this represents a hike on that streamer tax. Because you know there's a lot of people that are, that are going to be streaming this on Twitch and other streaming platforms that that's their livelihood. They aren't necessarily getting a free a free code or a free copy from Ubisoft. Um, you know, so they have to do that three days early. Like, if they don't do that three days early, they're getting left behind. You know that as well as, as, as anybody have, with your history of, like, streaming gameplay on a regular basis. And so, like, there is, there, this, is, this represents a hike to that streamer tax that is sort of obligatory for people that are in that content creation space that are, don't want to get left behind. Um, but, yeah, as, like, a regular consumer, it's like, well, I just do better to, like, wait until this... And that's another thing, too. Sorry, I'm talking in circles, but that's another thing too. Is like Ubisoft games drop quicker than most companies do. I mean, like this is not Sony. This is not God of War. This is not Last of Us. Like this game could very easily be less than forty five dollars, forty dollars come Black Friday. Only a couple months later, you know. So it's like, is it worth it? Is it worth paying this high cost of entry? Just to get in there day one, Ubisoft's known for broken games as well. Broken games that launch, you know, with, with, with Assassin's Creed Unity, and there's been other ones since then. That's the biggest the biggest uh, bungle that they've done, probably. But there's just a lot of there's a lot of things. There's a lot of uncertainty. And I will say, I felt that way about Hogwarts too. Like I saw the the trailers and stuff and the gameplay for Hogwarts Legacy, and I was like, there's no way this is what they're showing. Like, there's no way this is this good. It will be some sort of controversy or whatever where people are like this isn't you know what was promised this isn't what was advertised and it absolutely was exactly what they showed it played exactly how they showed it would play like i was absolutely blown away and i don't think i pre-ordered it but i went out and bought it like immediately once i saw like gameplay footage i was like oh my god like it's it's real like it's actually the game think about how rare that is now lono like we don't get games the way that people tell us we're gonna get the games we get mm -hmm. them in a weird mm -hmm. uh you know not performing as well not looking as good version and it, sometimes we can't even log into the servers and so like ubisoft is not known for being exceptionally good about that and you know it's like i i have to consider like is it even worth the 70 probably um you know, I guess best case scenario, I'm still knee deep in Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. <laughs> yeah, you just get to bide so I don't your even time. Have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this is one like uh, buyer beware. Like, absolutely, this is a caveat mTOR situation, and just everybody keep their ear to the ground and pay attention. Um, and 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 you don't. I, there's not pre-order incentives, are there? It's all just uh, extra money, extra monetary investment, like with the additions, or is there a pre-order? I'm surprised the Jabba thing isn't a pre-order bonus, honestly. That's the way that these things usually go. Uh, but if there's no pre-order incentive, or if the pre-order incentive is like, you know, nothing, um, don't no. pre-order this. I think that's the I think that's the issue is that you pre-order. It looks like pre-order offer. You do get like a Kessel Runner bonus pack and a speed cosmetic or something. It's gonna be nothing that you want after the first five hours of playing the game. There is definitely pre-order bonus, like there yeah. is. Um, yeah, yeah. A pre-order bonus is the Kessel Runner bonus pack. That's it. So you do get that. I again, I don't know why they didn't. Give can you even people... Google that? Like, can you even see what that is? Like, I just want to know if like there is anything that you are paying extra money for that you can even see. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's it's a spaceship cosmetic and a okay. speeder cosmetic pack. That's what it is. And and we've seen what that looks like. Or yeah, 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 yeah okay. Yeah, here I've got a here. I've got a screenshot right here. I can't again. I'm I the Which, that just looks like what they showed. Like is that not just the regular ship and bike? Like I can't tell. Can I scroll? Like up? how no, is that me... different than the regular ship and bike? Like I have no yeah. idea. Oh yeah. my god. The way they just sell us stuff and we just don't even know what it is. Like <laughs> I think that consumers are usually operating in a headspace of I see a pretty thing I click. Like I see yeah. a shiny thing I click. And I, I honestly think my prediction would be this game does fine commercially. There's a preview event coming up. They can market the crap out of it over the summer again because it's you know it's release date's August. So 
I think all of the... I think the people that are angry and saying to boycott this game will be about as effective as the people that said we should boycott Hogwarts. I just Less don't so, think... Less so, because there's no, there's no social cause behind it. I mean, it's just... Yeah. It's just or that being well, there is a social money. cause. The guys that are like they're making our women ugly. Oh. Like I don't think that's a large enough subset of the gaming populace to make a dent in this game's sales. So I think it'll be. It's fine. not even a good example of it because you can you can clearly tell that it's like technical limitations, like you were saying with the engine or something. Again, it reminds me a little bit of how Andromeda looked, like right. with the faces being a little bit wonky. Mm-hmm. Um, in no way does this look like a social justice like consulting hit job where they like made which i don't even believe that exists by the way but people in chat are probably going to disagree with me and that's fine i don't want to get into that but like in you could tell this isn't like an intentional aesthetic change to like make her not attractive or 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 conventionally beautiful right um i think they did a great job with her character design i think both of us thought that with the reveal, the world premiere, like we she's, like, oh, I think she's cool. part right. of the vibe. The the, the font yeah. choice, the colors, it has a, it hair. has a yeah synthwave eighties vibe. Oh, she's yeah. a part of the vibe. The droid wearing a trench coat is a part of the vibe. Like it's all one yeah. package. Like I'll admit, you know that trailer. I'm like, why is she kind of looking like a puppet? Like everybody, you know, I, Angry Joe's first reaction was like, she looks like a Jim Henson puppet. He's like, why does she look like that? Yo, that's you what know? it is. That's what I was saying about the eyes. Mm-hmm. The eyes look plastic. They look like like Kermit eyes. Oh my god, that's so, totally what it is. That's funny. It's like yeah, they, because it's, it's Uncanny Valley. It's like they tried yeah. to look realistic, and I think all of the non-human characters look awesome the droids the aliens they look amazing and then you look at the humans and you're like what's going on here so i'm i'm so excited for it i'm looking forward to more gameplay hopefully you know they can get out of this weird you know hate brigade on on uh, on the internet because the first trailer crushed it and the second trailer is getting brigaded against and it's like i don't think this is worthy of people's ire yeah. and hate so and to be clear i think both of us like neither of us is sounding full alarm bells like we would for something like hellblade 2 like i think we both fully feel like this game still has maybe even like game of the year potential like like until we see something that is definitively bad i don't think either of us are like counting this out as like one of the best games of the year it's just like there's some warning signs happening and 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 the pricing doesn't make the community more comfortable with the game it makes us less comfortable so it's like now we're more on edge of like okay you're charging us more why you know like like where's the value here because what you're showing us is not self-evident like it's not like with hogwarts where we're looking at the game we're like there's no way that's real like there's no way that this game is going to be this good like some there's got to be a chink in the armor somewhere we're it's more like we're kind of begging them like show me good stuff like show me what this game is you showed me the initial thing 10 months ago that's great and all but like that's kind of a a, you know you kind of cut that piece out and and curated it for me just show me you know uncut gameplay and maybe you you referenced a preview event that i wasn't privy to that was occurring so maybe that's a chance for them but like we could also have another suicide squad situation where people come away from that and they're like Guys, I got I got something to tell you. Like this game might not be like the hotness necessarily. Like I had like right. a like a so so time with it. You know, I'm hopeful that people come away with it and they're like, "Damn, best Star Wars game I've ever played in my life." Like this is gonna mm-hmm. be amazing. This is gonna be groundbreaking. Um, but like, do you uh, Jedi, anticipate Jedi, Sur- I Jedi Survivor? I got don't. a pass. Jedi Survivor got a huge pass from the press. It was getting nines and tens and all this immaculate praise, and then it landed, and the consumers were like, "What in the blank is this?" And that was all performance. The game was yeah. great, story was great, gameplay was great. If you could get it to run well, so uh, yeah, I go, I don't know, man. Star Wars could get the media darling pass. We'll have to wait and see. So I I I think we're we're gonna end up circling back and repeating ourselves. I think this has been a good episode chat we didn't interact with you guys as much because it's you know we were kind of having our own little back and forth try to pull in some of your comments kirk's name is clickable in the description what's new video games 
Check out his channel. Support him. He's here with me every Monday for the second segment. We are going to head to Writer's Room, and this is for $6 members and above. So if you are a gifted member, it's a great opportunity to upgrade. When you upgrade, you actually move the member goal now. We have a weekly member goal. We're making it easier for those to be hit. And if you upgrade for a dollar, you actually move the goal. You do not have to gift or do big member bombs to help us hit those goals. So I'm going to spam a link in chat in a moment. Kirk, what are you cooking up while I'm doing that that they could uh, look forward to on the channel? Oh, man. Um, You know, I actually think I'm going to be doing some stuff on Twitch um, in the very near future. Uh, As far as the YouTube channel... That one is kind of like, you know, I didn't really I didn't really get an opportunity to cover anything. So there's still the Rise of the Ronin guide there. If, if you're thinking about picking that up or if you're in the early stages of that, Lono's getting towards the end of that one, and, I, and I'm picking it back up now, finally. Uh, we're both really enjoying that game. I think we both recommend it. If you can stomach losing five frames or so here and there, uh, be, be, be wary of that. But otherwise, yeah. fantastic game, fantastic combat. And uh, an interesting historical adaptation of a period of history that I feel like the West doesn't know too much about or doesn't explore too often that Japan holds in high regard and, and, and high significance. Uh, but that guide is there and that, that's resonated with a lot of people on my YouTube channel. But I'll have more information next week. I think I might be doing a stream um, next Monday so I can kind of you can let me plug that maybe if you're willing but uh, yeah, I want to want to try to do the whole Twitch thing. I've I played some Marvel Snap on Twitch before, and that resonated with people. But I think I'm gonna think I'm gonna get into some other stuff as well. So we'll look into that. But yeah, nothing coming on the channel right now. Um, which I, I've teased this before, but that means you could subscribe, and I won't blow your I won't blow your subscription list up. It'll just be Lodo doing that on a daily basis. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'd love to I'd love to come back with some content um, in May. Uh, I may get. I may get a copy of Killer Clowns uh, from Outer Space, and I, I love covering like the asymmetrical horror multiplayer stuff. So uh, my fingers are crossed for that one. But yeah, just just didn't have a, as eventful as a month this this go around. Got Banishers earlier, got Pacific Drive, but uh, and, and there's not also not as many games coming out. But yeah. Hey. Well, there you guys have it. I appreciate you guys supporting this segment so, so much. Be sure to smash the like button as we transition out of this. You can always loop back, leave a comment. I had a premiere today about Destiny 3. Then we did a live discussion. Uh, We're going to discuss that format in the writer's room. This is the the behind-the-scenes look that you get on what we do here on the channel. A great reason to upgrade. So click that link that I spammed in chat. And then I'm also going to use Redirect to bring folks over. Thanks so much for being a Reforge member or higher. Another writer's room segment for you and uh, explaining some of the changes you might have noticed today on the channel with what we did with the content. I think I'll make it even easier to understand what's going on tomorrow. Just some tricks and things I'm thinking through when I'm scheduling multiple things at once. I don't want you guys to be like overwhelmed and confused and I think I can fix that tomorrow. We'll get uh, Creature on the line as well to talk through that. I'm going to end the show that I did with Kirk about Star Wars Outlaws and bring people over that are able to watch at that level.